Hi, my name is Elaine and I'm a credentialed diabetes educator. Today, our webinar will be looking at staying well with diabetes. The contents of our webinar are preventative health measures. We'll look at some of the things we can do to help minimize the risk of catching a virus such as COVID-19 or the flu. Then we'll look at sick day plans. What are they? Where can I get one? And what do they cover? We'll also go over managing hypo and hyperglycemia as they're often not managed well. Correct management of these diabetes occurrences are important for successful diabetes management. Then we will discuss some more tips for staying well. But before we go any further along in the webinar, it is important to say that people with diabetes are not at a greater risk of catching a virus. However, people with diabetes may be more likely to become more unwell than a person without diabetes or other health conditions. So let's start by looking at some preventative measures we can all follow. Hand hygiene. So frequent hand washing is one of the most important things we can all do to protect ourselves from catching germs. The spread of disease occurs more from dirty hands than any other mode of transmission. Lots of germs hitchhike on hands and surfaces and can be airborne too through coughing and sneezing. So wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Make sure to wash all surfaces with soap and water. If you're not sure how long 20 seconds is, try singing happy birthday. Twice is about the right length of time. Another is to say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, through to 10 Mississippi, whatever works for you. When you're out and about, it's okay to use hand sanitizer, but it's still important to make sure that you cover all of your skin surfaces. If you use hand sanitizer a lot, you may find that it makes the skin on your hands dry. So if you moisturize your hands daily, it may help prevent the skin from drying out. Over the past few months, we've heard a lot about physical distancing, as it's actually really important to help prevent the spread of illness. So what do we mean when we say keep your distance? Generally speaking, if we're at least one and a half meters away from someone, we're probably out of their cough or sneeze zone. When shopping, you could use the trolley as a guide to distance yourself from your fellow shopper. Being in crowded places increases the risk of catching germs. This applies to everyone regardless of health. The COVID pandemic has highlighted just how contagious some germs are. Another thing you could do is go out and about at quieter times of day if you have the choice. Are you able to travel or shop outside of peak times to avoid the crowds? If you're working, you may be able to work from home or stagger your working hours to avoid peak times. With regards to COVID-19, the recommendations and guidelines are evolving all of the time, so best keep up to date with local health advice. So coughing or sneezing without protecting others around you may be damaging for their health as they're very common ways of spreading germs. So always try to cough or sneeze into a tissue or your elbow. Be prepared to always carry tissues with you so you can cough or sneeze into them. Once used, they should be discarded straight away and wash your hands. If you get caught out and don't have tissues, it's recommended you cough or sneeze into your elbow. By doing this, you're less likely to spread germs. It may seem a little strange to suggest this, but if you think about it, by doing this, your hands shouldn't have as many germs on them, so you then reduce the spread of germs as your elbows don't touch as many services as your hands do. This is a practice we should all be doing all of the time for the rest of our lives, regardless of whether there's a pandemic or not. At the end of the day, it really is just good manners and it does limit the spread of germs. Other really important things to do are to stay home if you're sick and rest. If you go out when you're sick, you could really make someone else sick. If that person has underlying health conditions, it can make them really, really unwell. Sometimes we're tempted to work when we're sick as we don't want to leave the team short or we feel guilty taking time off. If you think about it though, we're often not that productive when we're sick and may recover quicker if we rest at home. So visiting the doctor so 
Everyone with diabetes is recommended to have regular health checkups with your doctor. By doing this, any medication adjustments can be made and your doctor can keep an eye on other important things such as your HbA1c, cholesterol and blood pressure. Follow any surgery attendance instructions. So it is safe to visit your GP, but there may be some special requirements during the pandemic. So make sure that you call ahead and follow your surgery's instructions. Currently, many doctors are offering telehealth appointments. More about this on the next slide. As mentioned in the previous slide, many GPs and allied health professionals are currently offering telehealth consults, particularly for things where no physical examination is required, such as repeat scripts. If a face-to-face -face appointment is required, then there'll be a procedure in place for that visit. Don't avoid going to the doctor or other health professional, as this could cost you in the longer term by allowing little problems to grow into bigger problems. Many doctors are now faxing scripts directly to the pharmacy of your choice to pick up. Some pharmacies are also delivering medications. Remember, don't delay routine or regular blood tests and always go to your doctor if you're concerned. Let's move on now to looking at managing sick days if you have diabetes. So stay at home if you're feeling unwell. Call your GP if symptoms persist. They may then advise you to attend their surgery or rooms, or they may say no need to see you in person. I must stress again, don't ignore symptoms. We are finding that people have been avoiding the doctors, particularly during the pandemic, and they may end up with bigger problems than they would have had. A COVID-19 test may be required, even for minor symptoms. This will depend on the current health guidelines and the guidelines are changing a lot. So when sick, it's always important that you continue with your usual diabetes routine. Although monitoring your blood glucose levels is probably one of the last things you feel like doing, it's really important. Even minor illness can have a big effect on your blood glucose levels. The only way you can really know what is going on is by doing a finger prick. If your blood glucose levels are increasing, additional measures may be necessary. For example, you may need to see your GP so that any underlying illnesses can be treated. Also, don't stop taking your diabetes medication unless advised to by a health professional. If in doubt, speak with your GP. A diabetes sick day plan. It's recommended that everyone with diabetes has a sick day plan. Broadly speaking, a sick day management plan is a plan individualised to you on how to manage your diabetes when you get sick. If you don't know what a sick day management plan is, then ask your diabetes team or treating doctor and get them to set one up for you. So you may be wondering why you need a sick day plan. Well, most people who live with diabetes will find their blood glucose levels will often go up a lot higher than usual when sick. This in turn can make you quite unwell. In the case of type one diabetes, it can lead to a serious condition called diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. This can develop into a life-threatening situation. People living with type two diabetes won't see this happen as quickly as someone living with type one, but sickness can still become very serious. Not all sickness makes blood glucose levels go up, Sometimes a sickness such as a gastro bug will make blood glucose levels go low and you may actually have trouble keeping your blood glucose levels above four. So let's go into a bit more detail about what a sick day plan will cover. It prepares you to manage your diabetes when you become sick. For example, reminding you to have a functioning blood glucose meter and strips, which are in date and to make sure that you always have enough medication at home. Plans will vary, but they will guide you on steps to take to manage your diabetes, and they will also advise you on when to start using the plan. The sick day plan will provide instructions regarding your diabetes medications and insulin, and if any changes to your medications are necessary. When sick, try to keep up your fluid and carbohydrate intake to avoid dehydration and low blood glucose levels. 
hypoglycemia or hypo. Your individual plan will provide clear instructions for your individual circumstances. Your plan will also advise on when you should seek urgent medical attention. So let's now look at managing hypoglycemia. So a hypo is when the body's glucose level goes too low, usually defined as a glucose value under four. So are you at risk of having a hypo? If you don't know, check with your doctor or pharmacist as only certain medications, including insulin and some diabetes tablets such as Dimicron, have hypo as a side effect. Those who are at risk of having hypo need to regularly monitor their blood glucose levels so they can detect and treat hypos as soon as possible. Untreated hypos are dangerous and put you at risk of becoming unconscious. So there are some common signs and symptoms of hypos, shaky, sweaty, you might feel faint, dizzy or hungry. And some common causes when sick are having less carbohydrate food, or vomiting and diarrhea. So if you're on one of the medications that has hypoglycemia as a side effect, it's crucial you know how to recognize a hypo and treat it promptly. So step one is take 15 grams of rapid acting carbohydrate. This may be a juice popper or five to seven jelly beans, some soft drink, making sure it's not diet soft drink, a few teaspoons of sugar or honey. Don't use things like milk or chocolate as they're not fast enough acting. Then you need to rest and wait for about 10 to 15 minutes and recheck your blood glucose levels. If your blood glucose level is still under four, you will need to repeat step one. Most of the time though, you'll find that your blood glucose levels are above four. And this is good because it means you're now out of immediate trouble. We need to keep the blood glucose levels up though, so if the next meal or snack is more than 15 minutes away, we need to follow up with step two. So step two involves having some longer acting carbohydrates such as a glass of milk, piece of fruit, such as a small banana or other long acting carbohydrate, maybe even a muesli bar. So hyperglycemia. On the last slide, we discussed hypoglycemia low blood glucose levels. Now we need to look at the opposite, high blood glucose levels known as hyperglycemia. So generally, hyperglycemia is elevated blood glucose levels above 15 millimoles. It can affect anyone with diabetes regardless of the medications they may or may not be taking. And it often occurs for a short time and often is a one-off elevated reading and can be caused by things like a recent meal stress, or it can be a bit longer term if there's illness or you're missing your diabetes medications. So some signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia are peeing a lot, being really thirsty. You may find that you're cranky or your cognitive um, mind is not so clear, a bit of cognitive impairment and blurry vision. Extended periods of hyperglycemia may increase your risk of diabetes complications as high levels of glucose in the blood over time can cause damage to nerves and blood vessels in the body. Always refer to your sick day plan and implement it as stipulated. The following slides will look at some of the things you can do in general to help you stay well. So flu shots. There's currently no vaccine for COVID-19, but there is a vaccine for the flu. Everyone has been recommended to get the flu shot because if you happen to get the flu and COVID-19, it could make you really, really ill. Flu shots are free to everyone who has diabetes regardless of their age. And they're available from your GP, some pharmacies or a flu clinic. You'll likely need to book ahead. If it is a walk-in clinic, then maybe call ahead to make sure that the vaccination is in stock. Be active. Being active is one major way to help you stay physically and mentally well. In terms of your diabetes, exercise is very helpful in managing your blood glucose levels. Exercise also reduces stress and improves your cardiovascular health. 
if you find that you're not very active, there are some things that you can do. Walking is a great form of exercise and ideally the goal would be 30 minutes a day of walking. So for some people, walking 30 minutes in one go is too much. So you could try doing three lots of 10 minutes. There are also some online programs that you can do. Or you could speak to an exercise physiologist. If you'd like more information on this, call the NDSS helpline and ask to speak to one of our exercise physiologists to find out more. And looking after your mental health is really, really important. So try and think of things that make you happy, such as hobbies. Is there a hobby that you already do, such as gardening or reading? Or maybe there's something you've always wanted to do. Many local colleges offer leisure courses. There's the University of the Third Age, for example, which has many leisure courses which you can do online. And in some areas, they have face-to-face -face groups. Have a look at a website for more information. Try to stay connected with loved ones, and this is easier said than done at times, but you could try using some of the new technology such as Skype, FaceTime, and other ways of making video calls. And like I said on the last slide, exercise to help try and maintain our physical and our mental health. If you feel like you need support, you can try talking with your GP or family or friends. Counselors and psychologists are also available. The NDSS has a fact sheet on sick days which you can access from the NDSS website. There's a sheet for type 1 diabetes and also for type 2 diabetes. So the NDSS provides lots of education events and webinars and there's the NDSS helpline. So there's diabetes educators, dietitians, exercise physiologists and a psychologist available to help you and it's all free of charge for NDSS registrants and also the NDSS website. Thank you very much for attending our webinar today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call the helpline on 1800 637 700.